Did you know we are losing antibiotics, one of modern medicine's most powerful drugs? Hi, I am Anas Al Horani, a medical translator at Doctors Without Borders. Antibiotics kill bacteria, which are responsible for dangerous, life-threatening infections. This makes these drugs super important. Without them, people could die from complications of small infected wounds or common diseases. But here's the thing. Every time bacteria are exposed to antibiotics, there's a small chance they learn how to defend themselves against it. And when they do, they acquire antibiotic resistance. Over the decades, people have used a lot of antibiotics, more than you think, because patients don't always realize they are taking antibiotics. So, bacteria have had plenty of opportunities to become resistant to drugs. In places like the Middle East, that are hit by violent conflicts or are trying to recover from them, violence adds an extra level of complexity to the problem. The wounds caused by gunshots, explosions, and bombings often require complex surgical interventions and are very vulnerable to bacterial infections. One way we are trying to tackle this issue in some of our projects is through laboratories. Here in Amman, Jordan, for example, we can find out which bacteria causes an infection and to which antibiotic it is resistant. This is extremely useful for our doctors to decide what type of antibiotics is most effective to treat our patients. بنحاول ان نمشي معاها بنحاول نعملها بروسيسنج ومعالجه بالطريقه الامثل بنبلش من الصفر لحتى نوصل نهايه الى المضاد الحيوي المناسب بالجرعه المناسبه اللي تنعطى لهذا المريض Another way to fight this resistance is through something we call antibiotic stewardship strict rules on the sale over the counter at pharmacies or on the use of antibiotics is very important but when a place is hit by war, implementing or enforcing these rules becomes very difficult. That is why MSF makes sure all our medical staff understands how antibiotics should be used. Even in war-torn countries like Yemen, for instance. في أطباب الأحدود تعلمنا في حال قدومنا أن هناك في بروتوكول نتبعه كيف نستخدم المضاد الحيوي لكل لكل إصابة معينة. لكن فيما بعد تم إعطائنا كورسات خاصة في كيفية التعامل مع المضاد الحيوي كما تتكلمت سابقا حسب البكتيريا إعطاء المضاد الحيوي المناسب له كيف يعني استخدامها We also need strict rules to avoid resistance spreading in hospitals In Iraq that's Fatima's job, our infection and prevention supervisor الإجراءات الأساسية اللي سيطر على العدوى أو مثل ما إحنا نسميها العواميد الأساسية للـ IPC أول شيء أول عمود هو نظافة الإيدين ثاني عمود التنظيف والتطهير والتعقيم وثالث عمود هو السيطرة على طرق انتشار العدوى. And patients have responsibilities too. In some instances, they need to understand why we take certain measures, such as placing them in an isolation room in order to avoid the spreading of the resistance. Our health promotion workers, like Amal in Gaza, spend a lot of time talking to them. في كثير منهم بيعترض إنه ليش ما بيضلوا يكتبوا لنا مضادات حيوية بدي أنا الجرح يطيب بسرعة بدي أنا الالتهاب عندي يطيب يطيب بسرعة دائما أنا بشرح لهم إنه المضاد الحيوي مش لازم ينكتب إلا في حالة في حالة إنه أنا الجسم محتاج لمضاد حيوي. There are many many different types of bacteria who all react in different ways to different antibiotics. On top of that, this may vary from one place to another. This makes antibiotic resistance a difficult issue to tackle, even in well-organized and well-equipped hospitals. Now imagine trying to do this in a war-torn country or places recovering from violent conflict. The challenge is huge. Yet step by step, we try very hard to do our part in the worldwide battle against antibiotic resistance. <laughs>